with my voice not yet back from the brink after a rather nasty cough. I hope I can struggle through this. And after all, Andrew and David said, I'm not sure what's left to be said, but I'm sure I'll find something. Um, doesn't it feel great to be celebrating the launch of one of the most ambitious national conservation projects ever? Doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, good. Thanks to national lottery players, <laughs> the Heritage Lottery Fund, which I chair, has been able to award nearly two-thirds the total cost of this programme. So that's £4.6 million plus the total cost to back from the brink. Thanks to the millions of national lottery players, Natural England and leading charities in this room, conservation bodies can work in partnership to save some of the nation's most threatened species. Now, as a Windsor lad, who grew up exploring the Great Park and collecting stag beetles, David, um, uh, you'll appreciate I think it's a great place to hold this event. It's a wonderful royal park, and I, I learned vital habitat for the wonderfully named and elegant Royal Splinter Crane Fly. Yes, is that right? Yeah, wonderful. I never heard it today. Great, great. It's just Slovakia as well, I believe. Just two venues. Here, of course, Shakespeare, who knew a thing or two about nature, um, set the last act of The Merry Wives of Windsor. In that play, a character says, better three hours too soon than a minute too late. Well, this project doesn't come a minute too soon. The species addresses are indeed on the brink. Today's celebration reminds us that heritage is not just about great houses, wonderful churches, fascinating museums, or intriguing archives. Our shared heritage is also crucially about our natural world and the animals, trees and fungi that call it home. Bats, birds, bumblebees, butterflies, our world wouldn't be the same without them. We can't allow them to be consigned to history simply as dead specimens in museum collections. That's because you know this, they're a glorious part of our heritage, a vital part of the enjoyment of our landscapes and of the, of the ecosystems we depend on. But their importance doesn't guarantee them a future. Thousands of species David, as, as, as Andrew said, rare and common, beautiful and often misleadingly mundane, are in need of our help. Since 1994, the Heritage Lottery Fund has invested over £1.6 billion in projects protecting and celebrating our landscapes and biodiversity. But it's not what you've got, it's how you use it. Um, and to, looking over my shoulder, to, mis to, to misquote <coughs> the appropriate superhero, Spider-Man, with great resources comes great responsibility. Um, I hope you will feel that when it comes to the natural environment, the HLF has used the resources of national lottery players <coughs> responsibly. So that's what, for example, Professor Sir John Lawton thinks. You know, as you know, Sir John was the author of Making Space for Nature, still regarded as the, uh, by the government and the National Heritage Sector as the lead guiding centre principle for nature conservation in England. Sir John has said, HLF has been one of the key players in making space for nature by putting things back. HLF has promoted the adoption of the core strategy of bigger, better and more joined up. But a great summary today, bigger, better and more joined up. And Mike Clark, a CEO of the RSBB, has said, charities are increasingly delivering for nature as part of the wider civil society effort. HLF has been a pillar in enabling this to happen. And we won these accolades by presenting a challenge to those leading the conservation of habitats and species. A challenge to come up with projects of real strategic significance. This project is one of those, tackling the decline of our natural world in a way that would galvanise people and organisations to work together. We concluded that greater cooperation was needed urgently, so that lessons and knowledge can be shared, greater resources brought to bear, and the pace of conservation increased. We asked for projects that make a real difference, and we are delighted that Back from the Brink answered that call and made such a strong case for national lottery investment. Back from the Brink's emphasis on the power of people is what marks it out. It really does. It creates unique opportunities to try new collaborative ways of working. Landowners and communities will be brought on board to support the landscapes and species that matter to them. Thousands of volunteers will learn new skills as they put their part of the project into action. In fact, every one of us, every one of us, will have the opportunity to get involved in the future of our natural world by hands on action or by simply spreading the word online. What's that hashtag, David? Oh, yeah, nature B F. No, the na na nature B B B F T B. Yeah. Okay, nature B F T B. Um, today gives us the opportunity. Today gives us all the opportunity to some of the work at first hand. The fascinating and for me counterintuitive idea of aging trees to benefit the wildlife. Fascinating, the ancients of the future. Fascinating project. So thank you to everyone who's gone got this great project to this point, including the other generous funders, many of whom are here today. Thank you in advance to everyone who will help to make this project a success. I know, I know it will be a great success. And a final thank you to National Lottery Players. And I hope that includes all of you. A few nervous laughs at the back of the room, a few nods, I see. Good. I hope that includes all of you. Because without them, this project simply wouldn't be happening. 
I look forward to celebrating many more milestones this project brings endangered species back from the brink. Thank you very much.